One year ago, I made a video called The Missing Colors of Minecraft. I looked at the existing block colors and tried to find colors that were not represented by any block. That video became my first successful episode, and at the time, I only had about 200 subscribers. I picked those colors just by looking to see where the biggest gaps were. Doing this mathematically would be much more comprehensive. I also did this in RGB color space. Its values are evenly spaced out for red, green, and blue, but that's not evenly spaced out for our eyes. I recently did a video on the OK Lab space, and that is a much better space to do this in. I'm recording this episode as I do each part, so I'm not sure where we're going to end up at. Let's find the real missing colors of Minecraft. These are the full range of colors most monitors can display, arranged in the OK Lab space. These colors here started out as evenly distributed in RGB, but what I need is a grid of evenly distributed colors in OK Lab. So I'm going to make a grid of points that encapsulates all of these colors here, and then convert that back into RGB. And here it is. This is all of the lab colors, and then over here are all of the RGB values. All values less than zero or greater than 255 can't be displayed, and I'm just going to delete that point. And then I wrote a function for all of those points that will display a text entity for every color. Okay, this seems fine. Everything looks like it's in place. Everything lined up correctly. Let's load in some blocks just to check. Okay, so everything's inside the space, so that checks out. I think I want to make this a little bit denser to put these colors closer together. Okay, new function done. Let's see how that looks. Okay, yeah, I think I like this a lot better. This will be dense enough to actually do what we need it to do. I'm curious what this looks like if I converted this over to RGB. I'll be right back. Okay, new function. Going to convert all of these into RGB space. Interesting. Let me remove all the blocks. So like there's like these arcs like everywhere. I guess that's to be expected. Let me load the blocks in as RGB. Seeing this stuff never gets old for me. All right, back to missing colors. Okay, so the next step is to calculate the distance from each one of these points to the closest Minecraft block. I could do that all by hand, but that would take a very long time. Even if I knew what the closest block was and I only needed to calculate one distance for each point, there are thousands of points. So I'm going to write a Python script that will do all of that for me. And here it is. It takes all of the color positions and calculates the distance to every block, and then it saves the closest block for each color position. So then I took all those distances and added them back into our spreadsheet, and then sorted by distance. And so this row right here is the most isolated color in Minecraft. And so if we teleport to it, it's this green color right here. Uh, makes sense. There's not a lot of things around it. And I think a lot of these colors are going to end up being like fully saturated, like in one color or another. They'll be like, you know, very on the outer peripheral of like the color space. So I might have a fix for that. Let's see if I can do a visualization of all of these colors and their distances. Okay, so I wrote a function that will scale these colors based on their distance to the closest block. So the closer they are to a block, the smaller they'll get, the further away, the bigger they'll be. And there we go. So we can see that we have this large cluster of greens up here. And then we kind of go down and we have a lot of missing colors, a lot of uh, distance down here in these reds and pinks. Some really nice colors down here. Let me get a little bit down further down here into the purples. So now I want to recreate what I did in the original video and find the 16 colors that are furthest from any existing block. I can't just pick the top 16 colors in our distance because a lot of those are actually all clustered in that green area. So like just all of these greens here are going to be taking up most of the 16 colors unless we do something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this most distant color and pretend it's a block. So a lot of the neighboring colors will be close to an existing block and they won't get counted. And then it will move to a new area, hopefully. And then do that for the next one and the next one and the next one. And I'm going to do that 16 times. And that's how we're going to get to our 16 most distant colors. Okay, so I've iterated through that 16 times. Let's see what the colors are. And it's kind of as I feared, you'll notice all of these are on the outside. So they're all very saturated colors. If we wanted to make a block that had this average color, we can't use any colors that are less saturated. So we can't use any colors down here. We can only combine colors like basically on this surface. If you add anything else, it's going to pull that average color down further and not be all the way out here. We do have a lot of saturated colors in the game. A lot of the oranges tend to be like really on this edge here. So you can have interesting textures 
and still have a lot of saturation to it. I think I'm going to do another round of 16 colors and see what the next set looks like. The second set still has a lot of these really saturated colors, but we also see like this clustering up here in the greens where we actually start to have like some more pastel tones and stuff. Uh, I really like that and it really shows how much we're lacking in light green colors without having to use these weird lime colors down here. I think I'm going to run one more set. So one more set of 16. Hopefully we can get some more colors that are more in towards the middle. I know that when we start getting some of these purple colors, I'll be happy. Okay, third iteration done. Let's see if we get, ah, uh, yeah, okay, we get some purples in here. All right, I'm happy now. So let's see, I'm still, this is the first time, I just see numbers before now, so that's the first place I actually get to see the colors. Uh, still some pretty saturated things, some around, around the greens. And up in the purples. This is actually close to some of the colors that I picked um, last time. I tried to stay a little bit away from the really saturated colors because as a builder, uh, less saturated colors are easier to blend in with things and it looks a little bit more natural instead of, uh, you know, unless you're trying to make a garish looking build or something like that. But I think three's the charm for me. This is where I'm going to stop at. Okay, wait, there is one more thing I can do. I am going to redo this from the beginning, except I'm going to restrict it from picking saturated blocks. So I'm just going to force it to pick some blocks that are in closer towards the other colors. I just think it might be interesting. We'll see what the results look like. Okay, last iteration done. Hopefully these are a little bit less saturated. I only restricted it by about 10%, but it does have a noticeable difference, I think. These are actually closer to the colors I picked last time. So yeah, I like these. I like these greens. I like these blues. I like these purples. I think these are, these would be very nice to have in the game and build with. Just please don't make it logs. I, th I am going to stop here. I'm going to arrange all the results and then we can talk a little bit more about it. I ended up doing two different displays because Minecraft can display color differently depending on what you are using. On the left here, I have the text entities for set one, two, three, and then four. And this is actually showing you the true color, at least, you know, as well as your monitor can do it. On the right, I'm using blocks, which makes the colors a little bit darker. And this is because of how Minecraft renders lighting. That doesn't really matter for everything that I did over here, because we are only dealing with the numbers of the textures really external to Minecraft. But it does matter for when you're trying to actually make something look a specific way in the engine. I've organized these colors from the most to least distant color for each one of these sets. So all of these up here are the most. So technically, if you wanted to string them all together, it would go from here down to there and then back up top and then down and then back up here, etc. One last thing I want to do is compare the colors I picked last year to the ones that I picked this year. So I loaded all of last year's colors in as circles. And then I loaded the closest color to it from this year as a square. Several sets of colors from last year are closest to a single color from this year. Most of the colors last year were actually closest to colors in set three. And uh, I think I know why. When I was picking colors visually, I wasn't really trying to find the most distant points. I was trying to find gaps and fill those in so the existing palette would be more complete. This would help with blending and dithering and all sorts of things when you're building. By the time I got to the third one this year, all of the outer colors had already been picked and that forced the colors to be in more. I think filling in the palette might be more important than trying to find the most distant colors or the most extreme colors. I'll have to think about how to do that mathematically. You have to pick a color that's only between existing points, but also has a large gap. So I guess stick around for next year's exciting end of the Missing Color Trilogy. <laughs> I'll put the hex codes for all the colors in the description as well as the world download in case you want to look at some of the stuff yourself. I added some command blocks up on the platform up there that will trigger most of the things I did. This is the same world that I used in the uniform color video, so those commands are up there too. Oh, and by the way, these colors here, these blocks are done with a resource pack. These are actually uh, technically real stretched out candles. <laughs> so there is one, two, three, four. So I, that's how I kind of did this right here. So I will also include the resource pack with the world download also if you want to play around with some of the stuff. These are all candles also with various things. 
And before I go, I don't talk about my subscriber count much or ask people to subscribe, but I recently surpassed 60K subs and I do just wanna say thank you to everyone. Like I said earlier, one year ago I had less than 200 subs and then King B Dogs tweeted about the original Missing Colors video and that really just kicked things off and I wanted to revisit this topic for the anniversary. I've learned a lot in the last year regarding just making videos and other things and I want to keep improving. I hope you all have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye. I really like how this color distribution turned out. It's beautiful and it shows how important visualizing some things in 3D can be. I really like this corner of the color space over here.